Okay. One other follow on to that. Yeah. Um, what, do you know why there weren't other Protestant groups signing on? Why there weren't other? Uh, well, Which ones are we missing? Well, uh, I don't know, Presbyterians, Methodists. There are some Presbyterians on there. There are, there are. Yeah, there are some Methodists on there. However, there is the sort of horror fundamenta, right? There's the horror of the fundamentalists uh, that is grown up um, uh, in, among some mainstream Protestant denominations. And one of the things that, that you're going to get hurled at you by the cognoscenti among Catholic intellectuals if you sign on to the Declaration is, ah, you're a fundamentalist. You're a fundamentalist. <laughs> Guilty. Next charge. Yeah, I, I you know I'd rather hang out with um, what, uh, what's his name, Dr. Land, the the uh, Southern Baptist Convention's uh, main man. On, have you ever heard him? He is enormously impressive. If that's what it is to be a fundamentalist, I'll take the charge. Yes. Can you speak to it sort of along the same lines as that difference um, with um, uh, in regards to um, a birth control? Yes. So we're talking about procreation being right. so essential. Right. The, the, the Catholic Church is very clear, but the other down, the other. Right. There's some, there's some murky ground there. Although there's a, there's a very large, um, you, you, can, you should uh, dial it up on the internet, there's a very large movement among evangelicals toward what they call open, openness to family, meaning we don't use artificial contraception, but that really is the way that God intends things. It's very large in that connection. Um, so again, I, I, I think the, the, the lesson there is that firmness of witness however difficult it may be, and however much it may involve you in peripheral fights, huh? peripheral disputes, firmness of witness pays off in an evangelical way. That is, it pays off with respect to the soundness of conduct of souls. Sorry, I, I, I think I interrupted you. Uh, so this, this, this is not another example of where they're, they're taking this as a point of, of a mea culpa about uh, contraception. There, there's not been that sort of a... No, you can't, I mean, from the, from the evangelical side, you don't have the same kind of church discipline <laughs> that, you have, that you have nominally, nominally, from the Catholic side. Right. Yes? No, it would help me, and that's because maybe I'm a, I'm a little naive in all this, Define your three terms. You've used evangelical, fundamentalist, Catholic. I mean, yeah, define sure. Define those. Okay, I, I will. Um, I'm going to define them as folks who use them as disparaging words would define them. Okay. And then I'll use them as I'm using them. Right? <laughs> fundamentalists are people in the disparaging sense. Fundamentalists are people who conduct themselves according to unintelligent faith who use the revelation as an excuse not to think, okay, by the, by the account of the people who use it as a disparaging term. And evangelicals, <laughs> well, they're soul collectors, you know. <laughs> they're out collecting souls. They've got a kind of capitalist view <laughs> about treasure in heaven, okay. I, I, you'll forgive me for the for the caricature. I am deliberately mocking people who take that who take that view. Now I'm using evangelical to mean people who subscribe to one of the classical evangelical confessions. So the confession of Augsburg. It's a classical evangelical confession. The confession, all right, or the Southern Baptist Conventions, which is essentially a modern confession like the old confessions of Augsburg and so on. That's what I mean by evangelicals. Okay? Then by fundamentalists, I mean people who will who, who say this. The ancillary disciplines, sociology, philosophy, um, history, archaeology. The ancillary disciplines should not be dictating method to theology. Okay. <coughs> With the rise of so-called historical critical method in theology, what you've had are the ancillary disciplines, history, 
archaeology, sociology, and philosophy to some degree, dictating method to theology. Instead of theology working on its own methods, you will find the last half of Fides et Ratio by John Paul the Great takes up that question. He's terribly worried about it there. So what I mean by fundamentalists are people who refuse to permit ancillary disciplines to dictate method to theology. Okay. Now that's not a definition that most people, that most of my colleagues at St. Mary's College, but especially those in the theology department, would agree with. But I, I put it to you, that's how I'm using the term. If, I'm, if it's a silly way to use the term, then I'm just silly. Okay. <laughs> yes? Actually, I'd like to thank you for that. I grew up evangelical, daughter of evangelical leaders, and a recent convert, and that was the most charitable and accurate description of both camps I've ever heard, so thank you very much. Well, thank you. But, um, <laughs> I, I, I can't afford to alienate any evangelicals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, talking about the discipline of the church, does the Manhattan Declaration take any position on the church discipline? As far as I'm concerned, your audience is really a very limited audience at the public square because sure. it's basically the politicians. Yeah. And what I want to know is, is the, the Manhattan Declaration taking a position on how the politicians uh, should be dealt with that are, are Catholic politicians that are voting against the position? That is no. Not explicitly, but but read the declaration if you've not done so, and then note that you've got 24 Catholic bishops as signatories, and among them, two cardinals, several archbishops. So the, the, the episcopacy, the Catholic episcopacy, after... Do you have the, uh, the, the bishop in San Francisco as a signatory? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. No. I don't think so either. Bishop in Oakland is a signatory. Um, the Archbishop of Los Angeles is not a signatory. Um, but you've got the Catholic Episcopacy, at least the stretches of it. Let me back up. You've got that section of the Catholic Episcopacy, Episcopacy who've been appointed by John Paul II and his successors, <laughs> um, awakening to the, I believe, the egregious fact, undeniable fact, that if we don't get some leadership from the pastors, we're going out of existence. Right? We have to have leadership from the pastors. The laity have as our job under, actuasi, uh, under apostolicam actuositatem, the decree on the laity we have as our job, the re-Christianization of the temporal order. I'm here trying to do that. SAPI is trying to do that. But we can't do it without principled leadership from the Episcopacy. And, and we're starting to see it. After 40 years, you know, it took 40 years for God to kill off the faithless generation in the wilderness. Well, it's been 40 years <laughs> since Vatican II. It's about time to see stirrings of life. I want to I see the river. And get across. Yes. By the way, it is possible if you go to the website to sign the document electronically. And yes. Somewhere around 350,000 now. Right. It's around 350,000 people. Right. And, and, and the, sig the, the, the signature is a gesture to be sure, but it's an important gesture. It's important to watch that number go. It's important to me to watch that number go up. I, get, I feel better every time I see it go up. Right. And it's important that those who are arrayed against us see that number go up. It's important that they see it go up.